All right, friends and neighbors, welcome back to another networking video. I thought that since we really only talked about uh, Skinny or the Skinny Client Control Protocol and RTP, that we close out the semester with uh, a little discussion about the signaling protocols, even though we didn't get to uh, a build on those. So without further ado, let's talk a little bit about SIP and H.323. Well, what do we know so far when we're working with voice over IP? We know that there are two main kinds of protocols. There's the signaling protocol and the transport protocol. And for signaling protocols, we have SCCP or Skinny, we have H.323 and SIP. For transport, we have RTP. And then as the indication or the details about the RTP stream, we have RTCP. So we see a lot of RTP packets and then every once in a while you'll see an RTCP packet sprinkled in. But that's the standard way of doing things. We know now that Cisco uh, departs from that a little bit and we'll, we'll take a look at that here in a second. Now over the course of a phone call, we have lots of events that we, that we worry about, right? We worry about the initial connection, the registration, how does the phone get its interface populated, how does, does it get its phone number, all of these kinds of things. And then we're actually going to make a call. So we have address signaling, we have to know the details about the other phone, we have to know uh, how to contact the other phone by, by number or by username. And then when we make the call, right, we know that the, the actual voice data is going to be transported via RTP. So at some point you're switching from your signaling protocol to your transport protocol. And we have to negotiate the parameters for RTP. So what port are we going to use? What is our codec that we're going to use or the payload that we're going to, we're going to uh, encode this as? And then finally, of course, at the end of the call, we've got to figure out a way to hang up. Now, along the way, we've also realized that there are a lot of support protocols. There's power over Ethernet, and that would be 802.3AF or AT. We have the trivial file transfer protocol, we have DNS, we have DHCP, and now we have network time. So these are all things that go into the support of a robust, fully functioning uh, voice over IP infrastructure. All right, so the first signaling protocol that we talked about was SCCP or Skinny Client Control Protocol. This is Cisco proprietary. Uh, Cisco bought out a company called Celsius, so every once in a while in captures we'll see the abbreviation SEL, that's where that comes from. Now, Skinny is still a thing because there are millions of installed Cisco phones, and Skinny is a feature-rich signaling protocol. I say that it's non-standard because it doesn't use RTCP to report call statistics or things like that. It uses another kind of Skinny message. We'll take a look at that here in a second. It still uses RTP for transport. Now, the nice thing about Skinny is it's really easy to read. Every single thing that you do with Skinny has a message for that and it's all clear text. It uses port 2000 uh, for the signaling protocol, and so everything that happens is on port 2000, except the RTP stream, so we need to figure out how we're gonna negotiate that. Let's take a look at an example. So here is a skinny example, and we can see the, the list of skinny messages goes on for quite some time, and the message title, you know, which we get from this message ID, is really sort of straightforward, right? Register request, register acknowledgement, and then we're going to do some stuff with the phone capabilities. You know, uh, what are really what kind of phone are we dealing with? What is the model? And then how are we going to populate the interface? What are all the buttons for? What is the this uh, what is this phone allowed to do or was it capable of doing? And then we can see things like we'll find the uh, we'll find the phone number here in a sec. And here we can see that we've got the phone number displayed for this particular particular phone. There we go. Now, as we make a phone call, right, so all of this stuff, there's the keep alive between the server and the phone itself. This is one of the reasons why it can be challenging to change the MAC address when you've screwed up a, a phone configuration, because this is pretty pervasive. But there we go. So that's, that's the beginning part of that. But let's take a look at how a skinny phone might make a call. So here is a skinny phone getting ready to make a call. And there's a couple of things that we want to think about, right? So the first thing is you pick up the phone. Now, in a lot of cases, the 
the off-hook tone would come to you from the call server in the form of RTP packets. But that's not what happens with Cisco. You pick up the phone and the call server says, play this tone. So this is built into the phone itself. So there's no RTP stream here. And then the minute you press a button, right? So we can see that the keypad pressed was number four, uh, the stop tone plays. So now we're not doing dial tone, we're doing you know, the dialing. And so this is actually how you would dial the phone number, right? We can see all of these uh, keypad presses here. Okay, well now you're gonna, you're gonna call somebody. I'm talking with the call server, so what happens now? Well, at some point we have to drop to RTP. And what we have to know is what is the port that you're gonna use for RTP. So I'm gonna change my filter a little bit here. And that will give us our RTP stream as well. But let's see if we can figure out not only what phone number we dialed, but how do we open up a, um, a connection to the other side via an RTP stream? Well, we've got another tone that we're gonna play here, and that's just gonna be the ringtone, okay? Uh, and then we're gonna do a connection. We're gonna start looking at this connection. So now we're we're realizing that we're gonna be talking with somebody else. And the open receive channel is going to be what we're gonna to use to start negoti negotiating those parameters, including, we can see right here, here is G.711. So we're telling the other side, this is the, the codec that I wanna use. And then as we, as we walk our way through this, we can see things like port numbers. Oh, so that is gonna be the port that we're gonna use for RTP. And so that's actually how this, this is negotiated in a skinny conversation. Start media transmission and then we go into the RTP stream. So if we scroll down to our RTP stream, we can see that we've got you know 30,200 and what is the, the codec that we're using G.711. Okay, there you go. So that is a quick overview of Skinny. We've seen this before. Let's go back to uh, and talk about our other signaling protocols. All right, so the other one that we want to talk about briefly is H.323. Now, H.323 is not actually the protocol that you're going to see. It is the ITUT industry standard. We'll see that here in a second, but um, it got its start in video conferencing. Today, uh, everybody uses SIP for the most part, unless you've got those installed Cisco phones, unless you've got installed gear that uses H.323, but SIP is really uh, sort of emerging as, well, has emerged as the, uh, the standard, the de facto voice standard today. But H.323 was the thing that everybody used. Now, H.323 is actually an umbrella standard. It actually includes H.225, 235, 245, with 225 and 245 being sort of the central pieces that we're gonna talk about today. These each are sub-protocols that handle a part of the conversation. So H.225 is registration and all of the things associated with the handset. And the minute you start talking about media, you know, actually transmitting VoIP packets, well, then we're gonna need uh, 245 to negotiate all of that. And then we'll drop into RTP and RTCP like we're used to. Now, other things that we'll see in this are H. Uh, I'm sorry, Q.931 and RAS. And these are part of the signaling protocol. Why? Because H.323 comes out of the ITUT. And the ITUT is all about traditional telephony, or at least has all the standards for tra traditional telephony. Q.931 is actually ISDN, and so H.323 includes a packetized version of the signaling used for ISDN, and that's kind of how um, H.323 has been built. So H.323 has a lot of capabilities into it. It's actually a very complicated protocol. It's enormous when you try to read through it all. But that's all that I'll say about that. It is actually quite large. And if you're really interested in it or you have gear, I'll show you the website where you can go to get that. Uh, and one of the other differences that we see here is that H.323 is port 1720.
All right, and here is the ITUT uh, website, right? You can see that up there. And you can actually download a copy of the H.323 standard. Now, associated with this will be all of the other ITUT codec standards. So H.264, 263, uh, ITUT G series, right? 711, 729. All of these are also found out here on the ITUT site. You would just change the series that you're looking for. And here is an H.323 capture, as you can see right away. We can see 225 here, but you won't see the H.323. So we can see the negotiation here. We have the TCP handshake, and when we take a look at an H.225 message, there's that Q.931 that I was talking about, and here is uh, 1720, right? So that's our normal H.323 uh, port. And right there we see H.245 dropping in, and this is mostly for our media anything to do with media now as we get ready to make a phone call in in H.323 what we're gonna see is that we are gonna try to understand what the other side's terminal or phone is capable of and then we'll start uh, opening a logical channel and negotiating all of those parameters that we need for RTP so just as a quick example of how complicated H.223 323 can be we can see that this message is actually kind of short but look at how many messages there are and when we take a look at say oh I don't know uh, a, a 225 what we have is the ability to drill down into all of these header fields now again this is pretty simple this is pretty straightforward but you can see oh my goodness we can start really drilling down into this because H.323 tries to handle every single possibility that you can imagine. It even has the ability to do the testing on the link. Okay, so let's uh, let's jump back down here and we'll see if we can find some of the negotiation of the parameters for the call. And we'll get to the open logical channel sorts of messages. Okay, so we're going to keep our eye on these details right here. So here's this IP address that looks a lot like a port dynamic payload type okay so if we were using g.711 or g.729 then that would be the value that we would see here it actually would be a zero or a one or, or whatever the value was for a particular codec and that would be true whether or not we were talking about audio or video in this case this happens to be a polycom and they use their own codec and so they have their this dynamic payload type so every once in a while we'll see something in this range 127 to 255 i think which indicates that it's not a standard uh, G series or H series codec. Now maybe it is, and maybe they're just typing it as that, so you don't know how to decode this. So this is a little bit of a uh, unencrypted way of doing security, I guess. Uh, but it might just be a proprietary codec. But in any case, this, these are the parameters that this side wants. And then as we bat this back and forth, right, the two sides will eventually agree on what we're going to use and see we see another IP address maybe 3230 going back the other way uh, and so on and so forth so um, let's take a look at the RTP stream so the RTP stream begins right here and we can see that here 3230 is one of the RTP streams ports and if we take a look at the there's the dynamic payload type that was 127 we saw that now let's do one more thing while we're here. I'm gonna filter on RTCP. And we can see that interspersed, right? There aren't very many of them compared to the RTP stream. But these are the messages that are used to convey details about the call. So let's move on to SIP. Now SIP is the session initiation protocol. It is the industry standard today. Uh, if you build your own call server, using something like uh, free pbx or something like that you're likely going to use sip it comes to us from the ietf so that's a, the internet engineering task force a different standards body and rfc 3261 this is also one of the larger rfcs that you'll read and uh, you can see that it's been updated many 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 times there are additional add-ons and things like that but the uh, 3261 is still the base uh, for this and of course it says here the protocol for initiating user session multimedia transmissions blah 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 now there are lots and lots of capabilities most of the capabilities that are in SIP are also in the other protocol but unlike 
Cisco, which uses special skinny messages to indicate what we want to do for the media transmission, or H.323, which has a whole protocol dedicated to this, we need something else or we need some way to convey the same information. So SIP uses the session description protocol to negotiate those parameters. Now the nice thing about SIP is it's like skinny. It's very easy to read, very easy to tell what's going on, and it uses port 5060 for its communication. So let's take a look at a SIP transmission. So here is a SIP transmission. You can see right away that the number of SIP messages is actually a lot less than either H.323 or Skinny. So SIP is very, very simple that way, but the, uh, the messages might actually have a lot more in them. But the other nice thing about SIP is that my, my impression is that SIP includes the things that it needs rather than you know all of this additional stuff for testing nodes and seeing what your capabilities are and testing the line and all of that. We can see the status codes here. We can see a SIP invite as the message type. So let's take a quick look at a SIP message, right? Pretty straightforward, pretty easy to read. This right here is where all of the set of details are that we need in a SIP message. So there's our phone number that we're dialing. It's the phone number at a particular IP address. But how do we do the same thing that we did before? How do we negotiate the call parameters? And we take a look here, we see this message that looks like it says SIP slash SDP. Well, that's the session description protocol. And if we take a look at the details inside there, maybe we get a little indication as to what we're gonna do. So taking a look here at the details inside the um, the SDP message, we can see things like the codecs and the ports and the IP addresses that we're going to use for this transmission. So that's just a quick look at how SIP actually communicates these things. And of course, it's going to the other end, right? Then we get an acknowledgement and then we drop down in. Now we take a look here. This is port 10660. And what was the codec that was being used? Well, the codec was G.711. But if we take a quick look back here and we take a look at the port, there's the port that we're going to use. And then here is the, here are the details regarding the, the codec. Now, just for fun, here's another capture that actually shows the, the phone connecting to the call server. And you can see it's actually quite simple. There's the registration and uh, the communication back and forth with the call server. Really, really straightforward. A, a nice detail to remember is that uh, when you get a code 200, that means you're in good shape. Everything else is something's happening or there's a problem. And here's a quick look at the RFC. You can go out there and take a look at it. I encourage you to do that. Look at all these standards and you can see that the SIP RFC is actually quite large because there are a lot of things that uh, SIP needs to take care of. But you can see that a lot of it has to do with error or uh, type messaging. Well, I think that does it for VoIP this semester. We've been doing a quick overview of the signaling protocols. And so today, of course, that includes Skinny, uh, SIP, and H.323. There are other signaling protocols out there, but these are the big ones. And then for transport, we had RTP and RTCP. A big part of what we want to understand is how do all of the events happen? How do we register? How do we get the interface populated? How do I get my phone number? How do I dial a phone number? How do the sounds and tones get to me? How do they get across the wire? And then how do we eventually negotiate the parameters for the media conversation? And we saw that each one of the protocols has a mechanism for handling that. And then of course there's hanging up. Well, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I hope that uh, this overview of the VoIP stuff has been helpful. And hey, may those VoIP packets always reach the earphone of the destination.